friends, it's Jenna Breathe. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a little combination of a little movement and a little bit of learning because for those of you that don't know me, I am a huge teacher at heart. Um, I have spent lots of time over my career the past 20 plus years doing a lot of um, educating people about their bodies and movement. And it's one of my very favorite things to do. So I thought today we would take a topic, which is balance, and practice a little bit and also learn a little bit. So over those years, I have had the honor of working hundreds of hours with the older adult population. And as such, I have had the honor of learning from some incredible people who are also interested in working with that population. And one of those gentlemen in the yoga world's name is Max Strom. He is this big bear of a football player um, body and a super thoughtful, um, gentle soul. And one of the um, sessions that I have with him at a conference, we were actually addressing the older population and he was talking about having a conversation with a friend of his who was a cardiologist. And his cardiologist friend was talking about how he felt one of the biggest problems or biggest threats to longevity of life was not necessarily um, fitness or strength related into terms of what we think of, but more having to do with loss of balance. And balance is a combination of things. Balance is something that, yes, requires us to have strength in our body, but it also requires our nervous system to have an awareness called proprioception. And what proprioception is, is just our body's ability to figure out where it is in space and to feel safe in that area. So if we think about young children, as they're going from crawling to standing to walking, lots of falling happens, and they are building the strength in their muscular skeletal system to be able to move from being um, quadrupeds on all fours to bipeds on two feet, but also they're training their nervous system to, to allow themselves to know where they're at in space. And once they start going, then if you watch kids play, they're doing all sorts of things when they're playing that is training their nervous system to help them maintain balance in different situations, to turn on different muscles to do that. And so, you know, as adults, we often watch little kids playing and we're like, oh, very fearful, right? That they are, might lose their balance or might fall from somewhere. Um, and it's always amazing to watch and that they don't because their body is learning or has learned where they are safe in space. And if we would play like that as adults, if we would continue to go to the playground and crawl and, and do things, look at um, ninja or parkour athletes, okay, they continue to train those parts of our bodies and our nervous system to understand where they are in space. Most of us as adults start to revert into a more sedentary lifestyle or more of a lifestyle where we do the same activities and same motions over time. So our nervous system doesn't have to know how to keep us in space and keep us balanced in a, a wide variety of situations. It pretty much only has to cover general things, standing, walking, sitting, right? General activities that we need for day-to-day -day life. If we're not regularly challenging it to continue to learn about where our body is in space, then slowly it says, well, I don't really need that information right now. I've got other things to worry about. I'm going to tuck that away. And over time, if we feel um, unsure with our balance or we feel unsafe with our balance, then we become even more and more fearful of doing those things and we challenge ourselves less and less and less. And over time, then we lose that ability both in the proprioception, the nervous sensing of where our body is, and also in our muscles 
memory to be able to keep us steady and safe in that space. Does that make sense? So I love to talk about balance because it is the perfect example of how complex our bodies are. It's not just our muscles. It's not just our nervous system. It's so many things put together, including senses. We're gonna talk a little bit about sight today. So, we are gonna do some very simple balance things today. We're gonna to talk about ways to um, increase the challenge of those, ways to feel more and supported. And the cool thing about the human body and our nervous system is it's very plastic. There's this wonderful thing called neuroplasticity where our nervous system is able to stretch and learn. As long as we are moving and breathing, we have that ability, even if we have lost it, to relearn. And, you, and the fun thing is, usually when we're relearning something, it comes back a little bit quicker than the first time that we learn. So let's get started with a little bit of movement. Like I said, today is not gonna be um, too strenuous. We're not gonna do a whole lot, but we're gonna talk about just some ways that you can take different balance exercises and or things that challenge your balance and how to feel supported so that you continue to grow in your abilities. All right, so I'm not gonna use the chair so much today to sit in. Um, I am gonna use a yoga block. Some of the things that we do today, I'm gonna use the yoga block and I'll explain why um, when we do it, but you don't necessarily need to have one. You can also just do this on the floor. We're also gonna talk about how to use a wall to help train our balance and how that visually um, allows us to focus so that we can grow the confidence in our body when we are maybe challenged in our balance, all right? So I'm gonna move this chair just off to the side and before we get started, let's just warm up a little bit to make sure that those bodies that we're present and aware in our bodies and also that they're ready to work. So standing nice and tall, we're gonna place those feet underneath our hips, lift up through our toes so that we have to engage the muscles in the arches of our feet and stack those ankles right on top of those heels and then let those toes spread out wide and rest on the floor. We're not gripping but we're still keeping that lift, that feeling of lifting up into then the base of our core. We feel that gentle lift and hug right across the front of that pelvis. You can put a hand on that lower belly if you need. Let's also put a hand on our chest and close your eyes if it's comfortable for your balance. Feel your body extend up through your spine, up through the back of your neck, all the way into the crown of your head, and tuck that chin in just a little bit. And just breathe. See where that breath is going today? How is it moving? Are there areas in your body that need special care or attention from you today? And can you send your breath into those areas? And as you do so, imagine creating space and awareness and a sense of health in those areas. And dropping those hands to your sides, opening your eyes. Let's take a nice deep breath and reach tall. And exhale, release. As we reach tall, feeling that gentle hug in our core, those ribs stay right strong where they're at, not allowing themselves to flare forward. And arms can go wherever feels natural for you. They can come out front. They can come out to the side. This time as we inhale, let's reach tall. And then as we exhale, let's squat back into a squat. 
arms as you need for support. Inhale, reach tall. That can even mean down to your thighs as you squat back. And as we do these just simple squats, really be present and aware of how you tend to shift your weight. Do you have one side that likes to take a brunt of the work? One side that you tend to shift into because it's your strong side or the side that you depend on to be the support side when we're standing? Maybe at the checkout lane of the grocery store. Okay, do you feel like you tend to shift your heel or your weight back into your heels? Do you tend to shift it forward into the balls of your feet? Okay, just observing through these simple squats. And then see if we can balance. See if we can balance that weight side to side, from right foot to left foot, front to back, from heels to the balls of your feet. Nice work. Taking just a couple more here. Really using these today as kind of a check-in. A check-in with that core, seeing what it feels like to be in a balanced way with our movement. Because pretty soon we're gonna take part of our base out and we're gonna ask our body to do things with less support. This time, just bring those arms down, shake it out. All right, so here's where I'm gonna give you some options, okay? Option one is you can use a block if you'd like to stand on. I like to use a block when I'm doing really focused balance work because it gives me a little bit more room, a little bit more space to move, okay, this free foot. It also really gives me something to target into. Now here at the clinic, we have foam blocks. These are gonna be a little squishy because a 250 pound girl on a foam block is gonna make it squishy. Okay, at home I have cork blocks. They're a little bit more solid. You might even see there's wooden blocks. You can also do these on just a stair in your house or if you have an exercise step. Okay, anything that just elevates you a little bit. But like I said, if you have none of those things, or if you don't really feel like your balance is that great right now, you can do these same things on the floor. Additionally, for support, let's talk about using balance support. Okay, if I was gonna do something and stand on my right leg, our tendency is to put whatever item we might use for support at our side. So maybe it's this chair. Maybe you stand against the wall. It's a safety net, and even if we're not using that, we know that it's there, right? It's an easy reach out to either of those items. But also our nervous system knows that it's there. So if we put it to the side, it's really easy to just go, oh, I'm just gonna check in. Oh, I'm just gonna check in. So instead, what I like to do is if I'm using some support, I put it in front of me. Okay, so if it's this chair, and this chair is gonna to be too short for me today, for this chair, we're gonna put it in front. One of my favorite things is to use the wall. And let me tell you why. Okay, our vision is very closely related to our sense of balance. It's easier to um, stay connected with our core strength and our sense of balance when we're really focused on something close to us. So if we're using a wall and we're facing it and we start maybe just eight to 12 inches from that wall, we can use that sense of focus, visual focus, to help us find calm and center our balance. Then as our balance gets stronger, we can move further and further away from the wall until we feel comfortable being in open space. And then we can challenge ourselves by 
looking at something far away, looking at something above the horizon, looking at something overhead. Those things when we have really challenge our depth perception is going to add an extra layer to our balance challenge, okay? So if balance is really challenging for you when you do yoga poses, when you're doing some work, take it to the wall. Find your spot, find a focal point that's not gonna move. I always tell my yoga classes, don't focus on your neighbor because they're gonna move and use that to help support your balance, okay? So, on the floor, or using something like a step or a block, we're just gonna do some very basic one-legged balance things. So stepping up, you choose. Right leg or left leg, you choose. Which one you're gonna work on first. I normally suggest work the side that is more challenging for you. If you know, oh, I can really strongly balance on one side, but it's more challenging on the other side, go to that weaker side first, the more challenging side first, okay? Make it work a little bit harder up front. Also, we tend to do things on the second side for a little less time, and the side that really is challenging probably needs a little bit more time. So we're gonna start by just standing centered on that support leg. And what does that look like? It looks like, just like when we were standing with both feet on the floor, our arches are lifted, our toes are spread wide, our ankle is stacked on top of our heel, which allows us to stack the long bones of our skeleton up. And then we come up here to our pelvis and we're just gonna rest our hands and see if we can level, and I know it's sometimes hard to feel whether you're level, see if we can just level this, okay? And then we're gonna draw with our free leg, and I'm gonna just do this on the floor to start with. With our free leg, we're going to draw a little bit of a half circle. So go ahead and point those toes forward and slowly, you're just gonna draw those toes out to the side, just lightly contacting the floor, staying strong through that core, and back, okay? And then we're gonna come back around, and you're really gonna feel that support leg engaged and turned on. Okay, let's do that again. So think about nice level hips, Use your focal point, draw it out and around. And if you notice like there's a really bumpy side to part of your half circle, pause there. Okay, let's come to center, shake it out. You can do more of these, we're on limited time, so I'm just gonna do a couple, because I just wanna give you guys some options. All right, shift to the other side. Okay, level hips. We know what we're doing this time, so we need a little less time to explain. Lift arch, stack ankle on heel, up through that strong skeleton, free foot, point those toes, and then draw nice and smooth through that half circle. and then bring it in, shake it out. All right, I'm gonna bring the block back in. This one is gonna be a little bit harder if you're just using the floor um, because we're going to actually utilize this negative space down here, but you can do it. Okay, you can do it just with a popped knee and not very much, or even a lifted foot, or the other option was you could put that lifted foot on something unstable, like a ball or a pillow, something that you just can't put a lot of weight into it, okay? But it'll give you some contact with the floor. So think about like when we're stepping up steps 
on and off curbs. Okay, um, curbs are usually really scary for elderly that are, don't have great balance because we have to step up and down and there's not a lot of places generally in curves for us to find support and we're usually out in the open, okay? So think about curves require us to do little tiny one-legged squats. So I'm gonna stand nice and tall on my block, strong core. If you need that toe can touch down, this is my challenging side. Okay, and we're simply going to do a little squat, one-legged squat, keeping everything nice and strong. So we're gonna push booty back, squat down a bit. When your balance feels challenged, pause, and then come back up. Okay. Push booty back, strong core. Okay, now obviously we don't make this movement when we go up and down a curb when we're walking, but we engage similar muscles. And without having something to actually step up and down on, it's hard to do the exact motion. So we're just kind of practicing. What does it feel like to have one leg support us while we do a partial squat and lift? Again, if we're really challenged, go up to the wall to do this. Let's switch sides. If this is my more comfortable, stronger side. So this side is gonna be a lot easier for me. Broke my right ankle once. Does not do nice things to your right hip. So it's always a challenge. All right, arch is lifted, toes are wide, ankles stacked, core is strong, hips are level down into that little partial squat. Again, can you feel what's happening under your foot? And then lift. Are you balancing the weight? And then lift. And lift, good job. Step up, shake it out. Okay, I'm gonna push my block to the side. Let's talk about tree pose. Hey, if you um, are attending a yoga class, and tree pose is a regular for a lot of yoga classes when it comes to balance, it's one of the most commonly used, commonly known. Let's talk about options of how you can grow your tree if you're not comfortable simply taking that leg right on up to that inner thigh. Okay, there's one danger zone that we want to avoid totally. That's this spot right inside our knee. So anytime that we are in tree, we want our whole foot, our whole lifted foot to be either below the knee joint, using the strong bones of our lower leg, or we want it to be clear above the knee joint. But what if it's not even comfortable just getting it to your lower leg? Guess what, we can make a little tripod. So let's go to our more challenging side, okay? Toes, arch, ankle, skeleton, hips, core, free heel can rest just to the inside of our ankle. Okay, if we're really challenged, we take this to the wall. The wall is right here in front of me. I'm using my gaze, okay? Arms down, it's going to give our nervous system the most feeling of stability. Okay, if we would lose our balance, our nervous system says, hey, our arms are out here ready to catch. As we feel more comfortable, we grow those arms up until we can stand in a tripod with those arms extended, not necessarily close to anything, visually and feel comfortable. When that's comfortable, then we level it up. We pick that foot up and we start again, okay? Imagine, wall's close, foot's up. You can see my, my, this leg is getting tired. I'm not really as stable as I was at the start of this practice. It's very challenging today. My feet are also tired. 
So, arch is lifted, arms start low. Okay, for to get through it, I'm gonna switch to the other side so I can show you. Okay, arms start low, and then we grow. So there's lots of ways to continue to progress our balance poses as we work on them. Okay, if, when that's comfortable, when foot to the inside of the calf is comfortable, then we go all the way up. And I will be honest, I have not done full tree pose for a very long time because I'm just happy. I'm just happy with tree down here these days. And that's okay for me right now. Okay, so if we grow our tree and we have the flexibility, then we take those legs on up. Unfortunately, friends, we are out of time, but those give gives you a few options and things to consider when you are working on your balance, if that is something you feel is challenging. Also, I encourage you to go out and play. One of the best ways we can train our bodies is to go out into nature and to play, to climb up on those rocks, to walk along that log, to do things that naturally encourages our nervous system, to learn about being aware of where our body is in space. In two weeks, we'll go back to our regularly scheduled programming of more movement, less talk. Thank you for sticking it out with me today and for listening and for learning my very favorite thing to do in the whole entire world. Have a great Thursday. I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Bye friends.